Hey students, welcome to yet another interesting class. So in this session, we are going to be talking about the properties of integers. So there are so many properties of integers. All these properties we'll be discussing in this session. But before we start with the topic, let me give you an important update. It's regarding the Paiju's mini learning program that is now absolutely free. But it's a limited period offer. So to avail this, you have to use the code YTFREE all in caps over here. So many benefits we are getting here. First of all, it's a dual teacher advantage that you are getting here. One teacher would be teaching you, another teacher would be solving your doubts. And our live interactive classes, after class assignments and assessments would be shared. And three sessions we are getting here absolutely free of cost by using this code. Also, you can choose the subjects as per your choice and class timings as per your convenience. And the link for this is given in the description. Please do go check that out. And I'm sure that everybody has joined the Telegram channel. If you haven't yet, let me tell you so many benefits we have here. The sessions that we do over here, the session PDFs would be shared over the Telegram channel. Some interesting quizzes, revision questions, Sunday facts, homework questions, and of course, session updates as well. You will be getting there. Link for this as well is given in the description. Please do join it. And for now, let's get started with the properties of integers. So these are the properties that we will be talking about in this session. Closure property, associative property, commutative, distributive and identity property. I'll be discussing all these one by one. Let's start off with the closure property first. Among the various properties of integers, if I talk about the closure property under addition and subtraction, it actually states that some or difference of any of the two integers will always be an integer only. Like here, let's suppose if I have x and y, two integers, so x plus y, you add them, it will belong to integers. Here, z represents the family of integers. Similarly, for subtraction also, x minus y, that also belongs to integers. Like, let's take an example. Let's suppose I've got 3 minus 4. That gives me minus 1. 3 plus minus 4, that also gives me minus 1, right? So, results are integers only. Minus 5 plus 8, you get 3. All these are integers, right? Now, similarly, closure property under multiplication states that the product of any two integers will also be an integer. Let's suppose x and y are two integers. So they will belong to, the product will belong to integers also. Like 6 and 9 are integers. 54 that you are getting here is also an integer. Like minus 5 and 3. Individually they are integers, product is also an integer. Talking about the division of integers, so x divided by y does not belong to z. Like here we have this example, minus 3 divided by minus 6 gives us, gives us 1 by 2. This is not an integer. But if I do minus 6 divided by minus 3, right, then it gives me, Two, which is an integer, right? So it doesn't follow the closure property. We can say that. So division over here is not following the closure property. All right, let's move ahead to the next property that is commutative property. So commutative property of addition and multiplication states that the order of the terms doesn't matter in which order they are written. The result will always be the same. Like whether addition is done this way, x plus y or y plus x, they would give you the same result. Like four plus minus six, or it's going to be minus 2, minus 6 plus 4. That would also be minus 2. Result is same. Similarly, for multiplication, let's suppose if I have integers x and y, x times y would be equal to y times x. Like we have 10 times minus 3, that's minus 30. Minus 3 times 10 will also be minus 30. Order is, order is doesn't matter over here, right? Even if you swap the digits, right? So swapping of terms is not changing the result over here. Talking about the subtraction and division. So x minus y will not be equal to y minus x, right? So 4 minus minus 6, if you do, that's 4 plus 6, which is 10. But minus 6 minus 4, you do, that's minus 10, right? So here, if you're swapping it, the result changes. Similarly, you see 4 minus minus 6, obviously, that's not equal to minus 6 minus 4. Talking about division also, x divided by y would not be equal to y divided by x. You can pick any numbers, whatever you want to, to check this out. 10 divided by 2 is 5, but 2 divided by 10 is 1 by 5, right? So here the result changes when we change the order. So this is not equal. So we can say that if I talk about the commutative property, so subtraction and division doesn't follow this, right? You can pick up some more examples like this to get a better understanding. Now let's move ahead. So I would say, yes, I would say that's for subtraction and division when I'm talking about whether it is integers, whether it is whole numbers, it doesn't follow it. Moving to the next property, that is associative property. Now, associative property of addition and multiplication states that the way grouping of numbers is done doesn't matter. The result will be same. So, one can group the numbers in such a way, in a way, but the answer will always be the same. Let's suppose here we use three variables, right? Three numbers we have. Let's suppose x, y, and z. Either I do x plus y plus z, y and z are in parenthesis, or x plus y plus z, right? 
So parenthesis can be done irrespective of the order of the terms, right? Let's take an example to understand this. Like I have 1, 2 and minus 3. So 1 plus in the bracket we have 2 plus minus 3. This gives you what? Here it is 1, 2 plus minus 3 is minus 1. Result is going to be 0. And 1 plus 2 plus minus 3, that way also it's going to be 0. So I'm just changing the parenthesis over here, right? Doesn't matter, the result would be same in case of addition. Similarly, if you talk about multiplication also, here as well, x times y times z, or it is x times y times z. Like we have 1 times 2 times minus 3, that's minus 6. 1 times 2 times minus 3, again it is minus 6. So it holds true for addition and multiplication. Talking about subtraction, you see x minus y minus z would not be equal to x minus y minus z. Again, if I pick up 1, 2 and minus 3 over here. So 1 is here, 2 minus minus 3 is in the bracket. This is, this is nothing but 1 minus, this is 2 plus 3. Minus minus is plus, that's going to be 5. So 1 minus 5 would be minus 4. But if I change the parenthesis, what I see here, I get minus 2, which is not equal, right? Minus 4 is not equal to minus 2. So similarly, I can see here it doesn't follow, for subtraction doesn't follow it. Similarly for division as well, if you see, x divide by y divide by z, x divide, div y divide by z, obviously this will also, is, will also not follow the associative property. Alright, so subtraction and division of integers is not associative in nature. This is what we have learned from here. Now let's move ahead to the next property that is distributive property. So this distributive property, it actually explains the distributive ability of operation over another mathematical operation within a bracket. So like we, can, we have here, if you talk about distributive property of multiplication over addition or distributive property of uh, uh, multiplication over subtraction, in both of them, what we are doing here is, let's suppose I've got these three integers, x, y, and z. So x times y plus z would be equal to x times y plus y x minus times z. What we do here is whatever is written outside the bracket that is multiplied with each of the terms that is written inside. Similarly, when in case of uh, multiplication over subtraction, x times y minus z, I'll be multiplying x with y minus x with z, right? Let's take numbers over here to understand this. Like we have minus 5, 2 and 1. So minus 5 times 2 plus 1, right? That will give me minus 15. Simply if I simplify this bracket over here, minus 5 times 3. Or I can do it, I can do this way also. Minus 5 times 2 plus sign as it is, minus 5 times 1. The result is going to be same in this case, right? If you open it this way or this way, right? So this is about the distributive property. And trust me, this is one of the properties which is used a lot many times. Because uh, a lot of times, why we use this property? Because calculation becomes a lot more simpler. Now moving to the next property, that is identity, uh, uh, identity property. So, among all various properties of integers, additive identity property states that when any of the integers is added to 0, you will get the number itself. Let's suppose if I have x, so x plus 0 will give me x again. Or if I write 0 plus x, that would also be equal to x only. Talking about the multiplicative identity property, so it states that whenever a number is multiplied with 1, you get the number itself. Like x times 1 would be equal to x or whether you write 1 times x. Or it doesn't matter, you would get the number itself again. And let's suppose, let's suppose if I say that if any integer is multiplied by 0, right? In that case, the answer would be 0 only, right? And if any integer is multiplied with minus 1, what do you get? You get the, uh, the answer that you are getting would be the opposite of that number. That means Opposite means you would get the, the sign would be changed in that case. Let's suppose if I have x, I'm multiplying x with minus 1, I'm going to get minus x in that case. Talking about subtraction. So here, let's suppose I have a number x. If I subtract 0 from here, I get x only, the same number. But if I do 0 minus x, the result would be changed. It would be minus x, right? Similarly, so obviously we cannot say that this doesn't hold true here. Similarly for division, x divided by 1 is x. But 1 divided by x is going to be 1 by x. So the both are not equal. So in this session, in all, we have discussed about all the properties of the integers. And I hope that all the properties are crystal clear in your mind. But if in case you are facing any difficulties, any doubts, please post your doubts in the comment section below. But for now, I have a homework question. Please do try this out and let us know your answers in the comment section. So you have to solve these two over here, these two questions. Solve this, try this out and share your answers. And if you're liking these videos, please hit the like button, share it with your friends and your school groups and do not forget to subscribe it so that you do not miss any new updates from us. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.